Hey. <laughs> it's snowing. You know, over the last four weeks, we've uh, looked at some benefits and rewards of perseverance. We keep on going for these great and important reasons. It especially sticks out to me that my perseverance affects my prayers. Perseverance affects my prayers? I want that. So now we want to look at how we persevere. Sometimes it's really tough to keep on going and we get tired and we falter and that's okay. You know, the prophet Isaiah said that even young people grow tired and weary and stumble and fall, but we keep moving forward. We put our hope in the Lord. We rise up and soar like on the wings of an eagle. And we often need help with that. You know, there was a Roman emperor by the name of Marcus Aurelius. And he was actually the last of what was known as the five good emperors. Well, he once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize that and you will find strength. Or think of this. Instead of giving myself reasons why I can't, I give myself reasons why I can. So the first four ways to keep on going are mostly mental. The power of the mind is huge. So how we are thinking will be a big part of motivation to keep on going. So how do we keep on going? Take time to consider that time is short. Now time is short in two ways. First, it's short in terms of what physical time we have in our life. It's like Ferris Bueller said, Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. This is why the writer of Psalm 39 said this, Let me know my end, Lord. How many days do I have left? I want to know how brief my time is. You've made my days so short. My lifetime is like nothing in your eyes. Yes, a human life is nothing but a puff of air. Charles Studd was a British missionary and cricketer, and he said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. We want to focus our time energy and resources on things that will last and matter most. The second way time is short is with respect to Jesus' return to us, to come to us again. In Romans chapter 13 it says, As you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over and the day is near, so let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the instrument of light. You know, we are 2,000 years closer to Christ's return than when Paul wrote that. And the signs of the times which Jesus admonished us to know indicate that the time is closer. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, when evening comes, you say, it's going to be fair weather. The sky is red and in the morning today, it's going to be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. So a couple practical things that you can do in regard to this um, mindset, this train of thought. One, ask God to give you a sense of his urgency. Just like that writer said in Psalms, let me know my time, Lord. So ask him for his sense of urgency and let it inspire us to persevere. The second thing I want to encourage you to do, and I really struggle with this, uh, is memorize scripture. Uh, take actual time in your life to memorize scripture, particularly ones that deal with time and end times and eternity. And then we can allow those scriptures to encourage us and alert us to urgency. Urgency to love well and share Jesus. Know that you will soon give a report to God on your life. Imagine it's like sitting down on a talk show 
just you and Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says, We all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad. So here Paul is simply talking about people who follow Jesus. In another passage, he has this to say, So whether someone builds on top of the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, grass, or hay, each one's work will be clearly shown. The day will make it clear because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work survives, they'll get a reward, but if anyone's work goes up in flames, they'll lose it. However, they themselves will be saved as if they had gone through fire. See, Paul is talking about coming to the end of physical life to see what we labored on will last. But regardless, all of it's dependent on the foundation. Only a foundation of Christ will stand. When I was younger, I used to view some of these kinds of verses as I was a little bit scared of them and seeing God kind of like the way the King of England is portrayed in the musical Hamilton. So don't throw away this thing we have when push to shove. I will kill your friends and family <laughs> to remind you of my love. Da 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 But I came to realize God is not like that. God is literally love. So it's about creating a legacy of God's love. Wanting what I live for to matter and last, being able to know that God looks on me with kindness, wishing to pay back the things that were good. And the things paid back for bad, well, that's paid on the cross of Jesus, so we're paid eternal life. That's a pretty good, strong foundation. Remember, Jesus said, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? So ask Him. Understand that you're being observed by other people. It's the same reminder of our benefit of others being encouraged by our example. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, We have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, like this stadium. In that verse, the scene shifts to this picture of the heroes in this stadium surrounding the, the competition, the race, running that, uh, observing individual races marked out for us. And there are all these witnesses in a sense of bearing testimony to the race that can be run successfully and the rewards are great. God gives us life and starts us in this race and we're all here for a purpose and that purpose is to live our lives in fulfillment of God's intent for us. Now to live God's intent, this requires not only an understanding and hearing of his will and plans for our lives, but also perseverance to carry it out, to keep on going. When we purposely look to the lives of those who have run before, it's going to greatly strengthen our resolve to keep on pressing forward too. That's why uh, reading and meditating on the races run by different saints recorded in the scriptures is so profitable. And read some good Christian biographies and autobiographies. It's so beneficial uh, to read some of uh, the stories of these people's lives. Sometimes these biographies and autobiographies seem a little closer to us, with some of them having lived in our century. These stories inspire and motivate us to press on to complete our Christian calling. My daughter has this book uh, of a hundred inspirational women, and they're one or two page stories of women written about in the Bible and those in our recent history, standing for what is good, right, and true. It's amazing. And let's remember that our kids, our grandkids, our community is watching our resolve, our commitment, our perseverance. Man, I want my kids to learn uh, to get back up when they get knocked down, to say sorry when they make mistakes, to take responsibility for their actions. That means I need to do all that. 
I want them to be encouraged by my life and inspired by it. I want all of you watching to be encouraged by my life. Sometimes I don't want that. I don't want others to look at me or think about me or care about what I'm doing or for me to care what others are thinking. Oftentimes we say it doesn't matter what other people think, but it does if our lives negatively affect another person's understanding and perception of Jesus. See, we represent Jesus as followers, as Christians, and I think we forget it sometimes. I don't care if people don't like me, but I don't want to be the reason someone misunderstands Jesus. And I don't have to worry about what others think. If I know I'm trying to do what God shows me to be good and right and true, even when I make mistakes. Do you know how many times I need to apologize to my kids when I screw up? How many times I need to say sorry to my wife when I make mistakes? It's probably way more than I'm currently doing, but I do it a lot because I'm not perfect and I think it's a good example of perseverance. The voice of the martyrs. I think it's important for us to think about and consider the struggle of other persecuted Christ followers around the world. And that is uh, helpful for us. In 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, Resist the accuser, standing firm in the faith. Do it in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. So again, grab a good biography of believers, followers of Jesus, who have persevered through persecution. A couple that uh, I've read and um, want to encourage you with, The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, uh, End of the Spear by Steve Saint, uh, the book Bonhoeffer, Pastor Martyr, Prophet and Spy by Eric uh, Metexas. Those are three really good ones. Uh, there's ones, a couple I haven't read, but uh, were recommended. Tortured for Christ by Richard Wormbrand, Evidence Not Seen by Darlene Diebler Rose, and Captive in Iran by two women that I'm not going to even try to pronounce their name. But, uh, or maybe there's ones that you know of. I'd love to hear of them uh, or share them with each other. And as you read them, think and pray for these people. When you stop to consider that in the world, 11 Christians are martyred every day, 23 are sexually abused each day, and tens of thousands are imprisoned. You can't help but grow in empathy for our um, other believers around the world. And as you pray for them, you find yourself thinking, if they can persevere in that situation, then what are you saying to me, God, about my current struggle? What do I maybe need to include in my, in my own journey that's going to help me in perseverance? You know, many of the persecuted Christians around the world have a deep dependence on prayer. They're well acquainted with the promise of God in the scriptures, and they have a close relationship with others in God's church and are strongly connected to other followers of Jesus for support and help. So how do we keep on going? Take the time to consider that our time is short know that we're going to give a report to Jesus about our life and understand that we're being observed by others around us and consider the struggle of other persecuted Christ followers around the world. Then some practical things. This is for the doers <laughs> that are watching. Ask God to give you a sense of his urgency. Pray for that today and then every day moving forward until he shows you. Choose some scripture to memorize about time. Might I suggest these couple verses? Ephesians chapter 5, 15, and 16. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. And find a good biography or autobiography to read or a movie to watch about a persecuted follower of Jesus to inspire you. And let's take time this week to encourage a couple people in your tiny village. That means we should each hear from someone in our tiny village just to say, you got this. Keep on going. Peace. 
I just want to encourage you to hit all the like buttons on this video. It helps us to know that you're watching. As well, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page and our Instagram, and do ask how you can be included in one of our tiny village churches.